Hey, good morning. Welcome back to Classy Tacos. It's Saturday morning. Last night we finished up the rear diff. Um, that went pretty smooth. I did make one little small mistake, which I'll go over when I ran the lines. It looks like ARB wants you to use the compression fitting at the diff bulkhead, and I used the quick release, and they want you to use the quick release over at the solenoids. Other than that, that install went pretty smooth. Um, today's install is a bit more involved. There's a lot more moving pieces, a lot more parts you have to remove and put back on. So I got the front clam on the bench. We're going to throw you on the bench here so you can kind of see what comes in the package and everything. And then we'll get under there and start getting it done. All right, up on the bench. This one is just, you know, not as fun as the rear because it's closed off. But just so you know, they do, uh, you have to remove what's called the stub shaft from yours and pop it into here along with like an entire piece that goes onto here. Um, you need to pay attention because some of the clams have an opening for a uh, temp gauge. Uh, looks like it's one of these somewhere. I think it's, let's see, it might be, no, it's the three. Yeah. <laughs> might be this one right here. I think this is the opening for the temp gauge. So it's like a, you're gonna have to remove that sensor and put it onto here. Um, I'm not sure if all third gens come with it, but there is the option of not having this. And it's not like an actual readout. It almost just throws an error code. Um, so you don't get actual readouts of temps and stuff like that. But that's this one, um, you know, pretty simple. You can see the, the copper line for the ARB is sitting in here. And that's your bulkhead fitting. So this is where that compression fitting would go. That's what ARB wants you to do. Um, and then this is the kit that you get. So there's your solenoid, um, the newer lines. These are thicker than I think those bluer lines. Uh, your switch, which we're going to reuse. And then the same thing, you get your the newer style kind of banjo bolt with the compression fitting and the quick release for the solenoid. So, and uh, you get, you know, instructions and stickers. And you get that, that like awesome warning, read operating, please locate within view of the driver. So that's what you get in the box. Uh, all right, let's get under the truck. First thing we're going to do is empty the diff. So under the truck, we're on the driver's side here. Um, that's going to be your drain for the diff. And this is the fill up here. So we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna do the fill first, then remove the drain, just to make sure that this comes off. This is going to be probably one of like two, maybe three of uh, random tools that you need. And it's a 10 mil Allen. I have a set that the box is really clean because you can tell I never use them. So first things first, let's see if we can get this guy off nicely. Without too much struggle. Sometimes they put these on really tight guys. There we go. So that one broke. All right, those are off. That's draining. I'm going to take these off real quick and clean them. All right, so moving along, the diff now is completely dry, drained out. We're going to start with potentially the most hated part in the automotive industry, which is this cap. Maybe uh, closely right behind a rear main seal if you don't have a two-part rear main. But anyways, this is cap needs to come off, and it's a huge pain. Um, it looks like previous owner here put a hole in it, so appreciate you, whoever you are, previous owner. Thank you so much. So what you're going to have to do is kind of work your way around this lip with whatever you can. And I don't think any of my punches are thin enough. I did the cap. I also got the cap off on the other side. I kind of spared you guys from watching that struggle. So that cap is already off. Now I'm going to kind of start this assembly here. I'm going to go a little bit more than like you would normally have to. You essentially just take off the cotter pin. It's like castle locking thing. Then the bolt that's back here. And then you could potentially just take this whole thing and kind of swing it out to the side to let your axle slide out. Um, I'm gonna go a little further. Like I have to take off the brackets here for the ABS, the actual ABS sensor. There's another bracket back here that's gotta come off. Um, and then we're gonna take off the tie rod end here and pop this off. And essentially the whole thing will just kind of come apart and that way we can test out the new spindles. 
this is one of those randoms that you might not have, so just be prepared. This is a 35, um, and this is a 3.8, so I actually have a 3.8 extension. Half inch to 3.8. So, uh, now what we're gonna do is just kind of leave this like this so we don't really mess up any of the threads. that just like that. I'm going to clean this up. It's kind of coming in at a bit of a weird angle here. So I'm going to use a pick tool instead of that little screwdriver to be able to kind of get underneath the little clip and pull out. All right. That one is out. And then there's a bolt right here that looks like another 12, and I believe that should free the entire uh, module here. Okay. Awesome. So up next, let's pop this guy off. We'll work down here. And we are almost set. So let's get this guy off next. It's important right here not to let your calipers just hang, so tie them up. All right guys, so the only way that I was actually able to pop this off, all the amount of hitting didn't work. I found these two random bolts that just fit these holes nicely, and then you kind of go back and forth screwing them in until it pops off. So that got off, so we're gonna keep moving. So since we have new hubs and we're just gonna try to put on new spindles, we're gonna go ahead and break these loose right now. These are the actual hub bolts. Um, while there's still some attachment here, I still have the lower control arm attached and the upper control arm attached, which should help us out. Um, these are 17s. Um, sometimes it gets a little tricky getting into them. Oh, it's so close. It ain't going to fit. Let's get a 17 in here. All right, so sitting here just like this, we got the whole spindle out, and now we're just gonna pop the axle off. You might lose a little oil when you get the axle off, but it is what it is. All right, now we're at the point where I think I can grab it and get it off. Alright, so sitting here like this, it's nice wide open. I'm gonna do the exact same thing on the other side, but I'm not gonna put you guys through any of that, all right? All right, guys, just wanna catch up with what's going on here. Uh, I took a break for a second from filming the front diff and removing that so that we can test fit the new uh, spindles with the all pro gussets i just wanted to make sure that they cleared um the rear of my wheels they did so i went ahead and just installed the new hub and the new seal on it and i left it off to the side everything is up and tied up with the axle shaft still off so that when it's time to remove the diff we're good um i'm gonna run through this whole process on the other side and what i might do for that process is do it on the spindle install video all right, first thing we're going to do is try to uh, break the drive shaft loose. There we go. She is free. I'm just going to let it sit here to the side. It's not really going to bother me here, I don't think off to the side here like this. I'm going to leave it there. We're just going to work our way here um, towards the diff. 
we got this one here, this one here, um, and then this really interesting one, kind of right here that you need like a, did I get it yet? This one right here, you need like a 12 uh, Allen, so it's kind of interesting bolt here, so. So we're going to pop this one off first. Uh, this is a weird one. Um, it is a 12 Allen, so I just want to make sure you have it. Um, I just have an impact grade, so you don't have to have that. Just have a 12 Allen. See it? I have an odd nut because this bolt kind of slides into here and it kind of locks it into place. All right. And moving up here, these are 22s. Um, there is a nut above. Um, sometimes you'll get lucky and it'll just pop off anyways, but let's see. Right, so it looks like the nut above it is a 19 and this is a 22. All right, so now what I'm gonna try to do is really just see if I can reach around and disconnect the connections above. I've got, that's the temp sensor right here that I was talking about earlier. So we're gonna disconnect that, kind of remove these clips. So we're gonna get through here um, before we drop it because there's a connection up above too uh, for your diff breather. So you're gonna want to find that and release it so i'm going to try to do that right now real quick um everything if you look it's just kind of see sitting here kind of moving it's just hooked by this one bolt right here don't mind all the dirt um this has to get removed um once this is unplugged we could then remove this transfer to the new one and then if you look right up in here it looks like there's a wiring harness here which is the attachment for here So right here, these clips and breathers, uh, they did take some time. So be prepared. You're going to be reaching up around trying to figure out where they are. Uh, the larger breather has like a hose clamp on it that does have to get removed. All right, let me get you guys up here for a little bit so you guys see what I'm doing. See those two pipes right there? they are going to be connected to those two air lines hanging right there. So there you can see them. One's really thin. One is very thick. We got to get those disconnected. Um, and now we're moving along slowly, just uh, disconnecting everything. So over here on this side, I'm working on the actuator for the 4x4. It does have a connection, a clip, and that does have to get removed. So again, I've got my creeper. Um, so just nice and easy, we got to get this out of this hole, basically. Uh, once we get out of the hole, then it's just a struggle of trying to finagle it to come on down. That's what we're gonna try to do right now. This is uh, where it requires a ton of patience because this fit in here is fairly tight. So trying to get this out of this hole is where the problem is. Um, it's not very friendly or easy and not very easy to just kind of lift like straight up as you can see here. All right, I got the bolt through. She's out. Damn. Where's my creeper? That was fun. All right, so here, here's real quick what it looks like um, completely off and just kind of sitting on the creeper here. I wanted to go over a couple of things that you're going to have to switch over onto the new uh, clam. So basically, this entire kind of shaft going this way is going to come off with these four bolts. These are kind of oddballs. Uh, I believe they're called reverse torques or inverted torques or exterior torques. Um, because it's on the exterior side of the bolt. So you're gonna need one, you're gonna need sockets to have it on the interior side. I know it's a pain, but you know, you really don't have these lying around too much. So make sure you have those. Um, this whole thing comes off. There's a shaft in here that's gotta come off and get attached. So all of this can stay because it's just gonna get put onto the new one. And coming this way, this is coming off because you need 
um, these hoses. This was the that little tiny one and the thicker one up at the top. Uh, it looks like one is a breather for your four wheel drive actuator and the other one is just a regular breather. And sliding this way, these three got to come off because we're going to bolt this onto the new one. Um, that's your, your fill. Um, your drain plug needs to come off as well. That one's all the way kind of tucked down there. So you're going to remove that one. And then if I flip this over here, that's why the creeper works so well. Back on this side. So this here is towards the passenger. This is the temp sensor that points towards the passenger. And then this right here is where that one odd bolt goes to um, in the back. This unit right here is the whole thing's got to come off. That's going to get uh, put onto the new one. So right now we're going to start just disassembly here. Um, and then we'll put everything on the bench and we'll get everything together up on the bench. So this right here, this right here has got to come off. Um, so it's called the stub shaft, so it's going to kind of go in and out, and it's got a clip on it. So you're going to have to pull this guy out because you got to put it into the new one. So we're going to pop this off, pop this off, then this guy, and we'll flip it over. We'll get that arm off, and we're trucking. All right, so up until right now, everything's been, you know, pretty easy to remove. Um, that stub shaft can be a bit of a pain. So I'm going to tackle that one next. Don't forget the washer, right? See that? It's like a little copper washer in there. It's like a crush washer. So you can take that with you. There's several different ways to do this. If you have a small enough pry bar that can kind of get behind there and kind of pull both at the same time, which is what I'm going to try to do. Um, and we're just going to kind of see how it works. Take it from there. There we go. So just like that. Well, it's almost out. There we go. So just like that, and it's, you're kind of fighting, you see this? The same thing, uh, you're just fighting that ring right there, so. Perfect, let's go uh, get you on the bench and we'll start assembling the new one to get it put in. All right, so here we are on the bench with pretty much all of the parts that I need to get transferred over to the new one. Um, so, just kind of sitting here like this. Uh, they're really funny about this. So you see right here where it says, don't forget the stub shaft. So that's where kind of this shaft is going to go into place here. So we're going to remove this guy. Nice and easy. Awesome. It's good. Just going to dab. It's like a tiny little bit of grease. I'm going to take our stub shaft. Put a little grease on this one too. Drop it and mount it. There you go. That guy is in. Uh, it's one of nice little just tap, make sure it's all the way in. I like it. I'm gonna take our temp sensor. I just wanna get it nice and clean. All right, so temp sensor is going right in here. Sometimes be careful because when they paint, they might get a little bit of paint on the threads. There we go. Just want to make sure it hooks on there nicely. Temp sensor was a 22 and I don't want to hammer down on it. So that's why I'm not using the impact. Uh, but just get it on there. Nice and tight. Perfect. That is nice and tight. So the way that this sits, I'm just trying to think it through in my head real quick, is 
sits in the truck. This and like this. So imagine the front of the truck that way. Uh, this is going to be the passenger, um, and then that's going to be the driver going that way. So we got to bolt this on into here, and we know that this shoots forward. So this is just going to sit basically like this uh, right onto here. I do recommend taking the time to kind of clean this up. So that's what we're going to do right now is uh, clean this whole surface, clean this whole surface. So I just have some alcohol. I'm just cleaning this outside here with some alcohol. Just want to get all the crusties off. It looks like the one down here is kind of off on its own. So you don't have to go nuts with filling this one with anything. Um, but those you definitely want to get. So right here you watch me put the breathers in. I'm going to just go ahead and say do not put this bracket in right now. It's going to get in the way of installing it, which you know I found out later. So just don't put this in. Uh, you're going to have to do this once the diff is in the truck. I'm just cleaning the drain and the fill. Then I'm going to do a wipe down where the axle goes on the seal and grease that. And then I'm getting that one long arm in with blue Loctite on the threads. Uh, so up next is this guy, um, where that kind of ugly bolt goes. And it looks like they have blue Loctite on here, so I'm just going to re-blue Loctite it. There we go, nice and crusty. You have one going up and one going down. So these bolts work. A lot of this stuff is like can only go in one way. So if you're nervous about doing it, like, you're going to be okay. Uh, and don't get me wrong. I was nervous about doing this too. All right. So it's not like I don't have no worries about it. I was kind of up last night thinking about it, trying to figure out the best way to do things. So we all go through it, man. Everybody. All right. So one goes up and one goes down. Get them both kind of threaded and started before you kind of hammer down tight. Well, just like that, she is ready to uh, get thrown back in there. Let me uh, spin it around this way. I want to wipe down here a little bit. Understand. I just want to check this. I kind of want to check this seal. Um, my old one is still having like knocking everything over. Um, I think the seal looks fine, but it's just kind of really dirty and crusty from all of my off road shenanigans. So we're going to just kind of give it a good cleaning. Doesn't look damaged or torn or anything like that. So get the insides done, especially if you see like there's like a chunk of a rock in there. So I'm gonna get that stuff out because that's what will kind of you know really cause any damage. There's a little lip in there, so all I'm doing is just trying to get all the crusty out of that little lip. All right, just like that, it's time. It's time to get it under the truck. Here you'll see me using Grandpa's Creeper just to get the diff under the truck. You'll also notice that the ARB airline for the air locker is installed. I went ahead and shot that while I had it on the bench just to make it a little easier. And I'm going to save that video for when we do the airline install video just to keep this video a little shorter.
So right about here is where I start to realize that the bracket for the breathers are really getting in the way and not allowing me to uh, get the entire diff up there. So what I'm about to do here in a second is I'm going to try a little bit more and then take it down and actually remove that bracket. So here you can see how easy it went in without the bracket on and, and then I'm trying to maybe try and get the bracket on here while the diff is still down but this didn't work either because it was getting in the way of the steering rack so I actually had to install the entire diff and then reach above and get the bracket back in. And this right here reaching above was the worst part of the install. Yeah boys it's in. The uh... That front, there's like a little bracket that holds uh, kind of your air breathers for the actuator and the front diff. That thing was just getting hung up on everything. So that was a little bit of a pain, but other than that, it's in. I'm gonna just start tightening everything down now. So right here, I decided that I would shoot the axle install and like wrap everything up for the spindle video just to uh, keep this video a little shorter because it's starting to get a little long. Right, we're good there. I got the line, kind of the airline just sitting here. I'm gonna fix it. All right, guys, we just wrapped up. It's a Sunday morning right now. I ran out of time yesterday on Saturday. Um, I don't know how it's gonna look in the video, but I wanna make sure everybody knows the front dip is a huge pain. So it took so much more work, uh, so much so much heavier with the locker in it. So just be prepared if you're gonna do this. It, it is a lot of work. Um, that being said, other than just like the struggle of getting everything in and out, it didn't go that bad. Um, I did add some more work by trying to throw the new spindles in at the same time. So if you're not dealing with spindles, it might not be that bad. Because even though it sounds like just an easy swap, you're kind of taking everything from the old spindle, putting it onto the new one. Especially the hubs, those hubs take forever because you can't actually get anything in to screw them down well. So you're just kind of going one by one, little turn by little turn. So that took a while. So this should be video number two. So we're going to do, just to give you guys an idea... We have the rear video, the front video. I'm also going to do a video of running the electrical for the solenoids and then running the airlines for the lockers. And then I'm gonna do a follow-up video on that for like, you know, just how I feel about the 529s and the lockers and what's driving been like. I have been monitoring the rear diff stock, the temperature when I stop. So I'll kind of kind of compare driving uh, for that break-in period of 500 miles whenever I stop and let it cool down. I kind of want to see where it's at in comparison to stock. So I'll be doing that and I'll do a video on that. And then I will also do a video separately just to, for the spindles because RC Fab needs his own video because those spindles were awesome. So I hope you enjoy. If you have any questions or you need anything, just let me know down below. Just be prepared. If it looks easy on this video, because I don't know yet, it was not easy at all. So you guys be good. Stay safe out there.